All right, it is Thursday morning. We fly to the Arnold today. My girl doesn't want to hear that. She has a fear of flying. Uh, I just saw Jerry's video about um, the uh, fat loss slowed through the intake of branch chain amino acids, uh, branch chain amino acids (BCAAs), and I had already seen where um, uh, another guy just. Uh, Google master who uh, just just pounds out videos just shits out garbage videos on you know this one behind the other every single fucking day and um, the information is so horrid because the this other guy not Jerry he uh, has no he has no firsthand experience he has no standing in other words okay which is like a legal term where you're not involved in this conversation more or less that you don't have any standing to, you know, everybody's entitled to opinion, so as far as that, sure, you, yeah, yeah, you can have your opinion. But if you were to watch somebody trying to give you information about something that they can't apply, that they haven't seen work, you understand? It's a huge, huge difference between doing something and knowing it works. As always, I'll, I'll give you a real simple example. Uh, if... You're talking to bigger guys, you know, like this or like this or any of the bigger guys out there. You know, we know how we got big. And it's not, you know, what all the busters want to say it is. It's just not. And, in fact, I'll go so far as to say that that's one of the smallest contributing factors. It's one of the smallest contributing factors. Now, you believe what you want to believe. But food is the most anabolic thing you can put in your body. But that's neither here nor there other than just to get the point across that you wouldn't go up to somebody that doesn't, isn't interested in building muscle or hasn't built any muscle or hasn't even delved into the attempt to build any muscle and ask them just, you know, Joe Blow walking down the street, hey, how can I build muscle? Wouldn't that be an odd thing to do? You know, it's not, right? But if he had a little pocket device with him, as everybody does nowadays, except for me, he could pull it out and he could Google really quick and he could give you know, the inquisitor explanation of, oh, here, this is what Wikipedia says you build muscle this way. That's more or less what you have with some of these cats that just shit these videos out of their ass one behind the other and, and they have no actual standing from which they're speaking. The guy has no credentials to, you know. If you wanted to buy a certain car, particular car, you might... If you happen to see, you know, you know, two people in your street or in your neighborhood that have this car that you're interested in, you may want to ask them, hey, what do you how many miles you got on a car? How much have you driven it? What do you think of that car? What's your opinion of that car? You know, couldn't you Google it and get like Motor Trend's opinion? You see what I'm saying? See what I'm getting at? The people that own the car, they're going to probably give you a whole different story than what you may read from you know, reviews of the car that didn't come from owners of the car, right? But people, guys, especially with their frail, little, brittle egos and self-esteem, they want to hate on everybody else. So this is the only area where that kind of thing, they, people don't apply that. Most guys don't apply that. But these are guys that have achieved what they're set out to achieve physically. The guys that are achieving what they're set out to achieve, they understand it's the people who already possess what they're after, they have the knowledge. Yeah. But Jerry chose to address it about the uh, BCAAs and that, yes, in fact, it's not the thing to do when you're trying to lose body fat. And if you uh, have worked with me and I've helped you with diet or anything, you know that other than times of dieting, I'm a huge advocate of BCAAs. I take lots of BCAAs. And if you talk to other huge guys, these dudes take large amounts of BCAAs. You have BCAAs when they train, not small amounts by any means. You know, I take rather healthy doses of BCAAs. And uh, there's lots of reasons for that. But what you probably know if you've worked with me dieting, it's that if we set a date from this date to this date, I'm on this diet with this expectation, I'm shooting for this, then you're going to go balls to the wall, follow every minute detail of the 
diet program, the nutritional program, and, and for that period of time. So for that period of time, it's going to be different and exclusive. The things I want somebody to do or that I'm going to do just to come in where I'm trying to come in and get there in that 90 days or whatever the time window is. And there's no BCAAs. No BCAAs. Um, I, I, could you take them and still succeed? Yeah, you probably could. Especially the way that I'm doing things, you probably could. But I already know that uh, Jerry has a really good understanding, firm grasp on what dietary thermogenesis is. And for the most part, like I've told you, it's what we all do. You know, now, for whatever reason, people don't come out there and just spoon feed it to you and explain it to you like you know I do. Um, that's basically what we do. Protein is um, the most cost, uh, calorically, the most costly nutrient that you can put in your body out of the macros. Protein, um, if done correctly, if done correctly, and I don't count on this golden percentage, but just as a point of reference, just to, to put things in perspective, you can burn up to 45% of your total daily caloric intake just from the protein you consume if you do it correctly. And of course, the sources of foods, you know, I have people eat um, costly foods, foods that's, that are expensive. Let me give you another example to understand very clearly. And most of you guys that have been here a while, you know, you've heard me do say this and explain this in great detail. Um, celery. I consider it to have negative calories because if you eat celery, it costs more calorically, energy-wise, for you to chew, swallow, digest, and uh, try to extract the nutrients from this celery. It costs more calorically than the total amount of calories available within the celery itself. So you're just digging yourself into a hole. And that's, in essence, dietary thermogenesis. And that's the way that I diet. I've died in many other ways over many years and decades, but that's the best way. And that's the way, to tell you the truth, that's the way pretty much most people do it today. You will be hard-pressed to find anybody competing on a professional level that doesn't employ dietary thermogenesis to one extent or another. Now, me, because I don't rely on anything else but food and, you know, etc. to get into condition and everybody who I'm, I'm working with they're losing incredible amounts of weight and they're not losing muscle and they're actually looking completely different as we go along very quickly. And how do I do that? Dietary thermogenesis because again, you cannot just selectively starve a portion of the body. Okay? When you dig a huge, well, when you dig the hole, it's different because digging is work. Okay? So dietary thermogenesis is different. But when you do it, by, you know, taking in less calories, my, my, you know, maintenance level is this, and I take in less than, yeah, okay, you keep on doing that. Me, I'm for burning off body fat, but at the same time, I have to feed and provide an anabolic environment for the body, for the rest of the body, for the muscle, for the lean tissue. How are you going to do that? Dietary thermogenesis. So, and again, I've made extensive explanations of this extensive explanations in related videos which you can very easily find they're not that old from maybe december or something i guess i put them up around there about dietary thermogenesis eat more burn more body fat through eating and during that period of time you know i have the protein up pretty high because it costs well it takes more protein in my daily intake for me to do that and for me to uh lean down and get hard than it does for me to get big. A lot less protein is required for me to get big. So what do I do most of the year? Most of the year, I'm not dieting down for anything, in, in, you know, specifically. I'm either just maintaining a condition, more or less, or I'm trying to build a little bit more size, maybe. So most of the year, I'm not going to take in that amount of protein. I'm not taking in that crazy high protein. So is it going to harm me for 90 days? To crank that protein up or for whatever period of time? No. No. Plus the water, you know, gallon a day or better and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. So when we diet down the way that I do things, 
That's the way, that's the gorilla way, that's what we do. Dietary thermogenesis, and we turn the protein up high to affect that. So the foods that you would eat, like other foods, you would eat uh, foods that are high in fiber. Want to get lean? High fiber foods. It costs more calorically for you to digest, etc., etc. Uh, everything costs. Everything costs calories. Calories are the coin of the realm. Even just the uh, saliva that it takes, your food begins digestion in the mouth as you begin to chew it. Every step of the way costs. Costs. Even the water. Drink a gallon of water a day at room temperature or, you know, whatever, if it's fairly warm out, especially during the summer. Yeah, that's awesome. You got the gallon of water in, but what happens if it were a gallon of freezing cold ice water all day? Costs more calorically. Why? Because what's the body temperature? What's your core temperature of your body? What's the temperature of that water? Right? That cold water? Body's got to heat that water up. That water's going to displace heat from the body. Dietary thermogenesis. Uh, you know, so everything costs. Yeah, and you're probably thinking, how much can that cost? Well, it's a lot of little things add up to huge things. But the high protein, especially particularly the sources from which it comes, huge thing. Um, we change our other, you know, our, our fat sources. We change our carbohydrate sources. Now, the least expensive macronutrient, interestingly enough, to, uh, to intake into the body calorically are fats. Fats cost almost no energy. So... Why do you get fat when you eat fat? Because part of it is it doesn't cost anything to eat fat. It's almost uh, a perfect uh, nutrient as far as how your body can, uh, can intake it. It doesn't, doesn't burn any calories really to absorb fat, to digest and absorb fat. It does carbohydrates, especially if you pick fibrous choices, complex choices, you know, whole grain choices, things like this that are going to, costs more to digest, and protein is most expensive of all. So that's that. So that's like, you know, your vegetable drinks. I drink vegetable juice, but I don't drink it if I'm trying to diet down. If I'm trying to diet down, I want the whole vegetable. Same thing with fruit. If I like fruit juice occasionally, well, am I going to be better off with fruit juice or the whole fruit if I'm trying to diet down? Whole fruit. So the whole food selection is different. But anyway, he's 100% correct, of course, and he doesn't need me to affirm that. He knows he is. In that BCAAs, you know, one guy, he said to me off the cuff, mentioned that, well, when I take my BCAAs, I'm like, what? BCAAs? I can't take BCAAs right now. That's, that's not for dieting. No, stick to, you stick to the program. If it's not in the diet, if it's not in the diet plan, no freelancing allowed. You, only things, only specifically, specifically what's in the diet plan. So yeah, no, no BCAAs when you're dieting down. No BCAAs dieting down. And I'll tell you another oddball thing is that since I have, uh, you know what, I'll save it for another video because some of these videos get too long and people whine about it. Uh, short attention spans or am I really just that boring? Maybe a little of both. Anyway. Take care. Catch you guys later. Have a great morning.